So let's talk through every single faction in Warhammer 40k and take a look at the cheapest army that they can possibly field at 2,000 points in the current rules of the game. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd cover a video that I've had on my to-do list for really quite a long time now. I've quite often had a request to make a video about every single faction's cheapest army they can possibly field, though at the moment I have been putting it off due to the amount of time it might take. Time to rectify that today though, as we're going to go through each army in the game, and take a look at the 2000 point army list build that I think is the cheapest that you can possibly make in terms of money spent. I've made a few similar videos to this on the channel, they're only tending to cover a small fraction of the 40k armies. I know other channels have done similar videos to this in the past. The Poor Hammer People's ones were all rather good. I did notice a similar sort of video made by the channel Spoons Rattling as well. But I thought it would be fun to have a go at my own version, particularly as really quite a lot of the points in 40k have changed with the last balance update. In any case, for this video, the basic rules I set myself were to build a 1950 to 2000 point army list and do it in a way that you could field as a legal 10th edition army with a character that could be the warlord, not use more than 6 of any battle line or dedicated transport data sheet, and not use more than 3 of anything else. For the last 50 points for the army or so, I've said that you might well be able to make it up with enhancements depending on the detachment that you're using, but for most armies I've tried to get at least fairly close to 2k. For the kits that you're allowed to draw on for this, I've chosen to use any current 40k kits sold by Games Workshop, so no historic box sets for the most part, though I will mention Leviathan as it is kind of recent. And for this one I'm going to try and aim not to use any counts as models for the most part. You could potentially get cheaper space marines by using heresy era ones, but I'll stick to 40k models for this one. Price wise I'm going to use US dollars and I'm not going to go converting every single one into both pounds and euros for this video, though I usually do try to. This was already going to be really quite a big project. So feel free to change it into your own currency for a conversion if you'd like to. You just need to put the certain kits bought into Games Workshop's web store. I chose US dollars given it's going to be the single most likely one to be relevant to people watching. Though I know it's only around about a third of you. Finally, I would bear in mind that as always you can get models for a bit cheaper and this could take the edge off plenty of these prices. If you're in the USA, you could buy through Wargame Portal, for example. That's 15% off, and the link is in the video description. But there's plenty of other places around the world, like Element Games in the UK, Gap Games in Australia, or Fenris Workshop in Canada. If you buy through any of those, a small amount does go to help support all specs tactics, and the links are all down in the video description. If you did want new plastic, and you want literally the cheapest armies in 40k, using one of these guys is likely going to be the way. In any case though, without any further delay, let's jump into it, starting out with the Imperium and the Space Marines. Typically they've tended to be a fairly good army in terms of getting points on the board for money spent, though over the past few years or so that has dipped a little bit. The best I could make was $530 with things currently on store, that's using Robuste Gilliman, though you could trade him out for the Lion, 3 units of 10 Hellblasters, 1 Desolation Squad, and then 2 copies of the Warhammer 40k starter set. The one with the Termi Captain, 5 Infernus Marines and a Terminator Squad in, plus you would get the Tyranids inside as well which could be split or sold, I haven't taken off the value here though. That clocks in at just over 2000 points, though I guess if you wanted to be under you could swap out those Desolation Marines for something like some Incursors perhaps. Kind of interesting that the Fancy Primarchs are some of the best ways to get points on the board in terms of money spent. They do seem to be the best things on sale, and it's surprising that the various copies of Space Marine Combat Patrols don't actually seem to win this contest, not against things like Hellblasters. For the Space Marines, you could consider other big box sets, the Leviathan and the Age of Darkness ones in particular. The Leviathan box set still gets you to 3.5 points per dollar, even ignoring the Tyranids, which is quite good. It's still one of the best 40k deals out there if you can find it. There are plenty around in Warhammer stores, and Element Games still has some in the UK. The Age of Darkness could be another interesting option, it would need a little bit of proxying due to its heresy aesthetic and a few things that don't directly translate such as the Contempt of Dreadnought. Though I think that this one would add up to theoretically the cheapest if you want to use those tactical marines as a tactical squad or intercessor squad or something. I was interested to see how the numbers would look if you were able to land Leviathan and use half of the contents though. Say for example if you were able to split a couple of Leviathan boxes with your friend. You pay for just the Space Marines for half the copy and they get to keep the rulebook and the Tyranids. That would cost you two sets of $125 and you get two Terminator Captains, 
two librarians, two combi weapon lieutenants, and two apothecary biologists, then 20 Infernus Marines, 10 Terminators, 10 Stern Guard, two Ballistas Dreads, and then rounding off the list with 10 Hellblasters. That gets you all the way down to $310 for a 2,000 point list. And assuming that you could get your hands on Leviathan and split it that way, this one did add up to the single cheapest 2,000 point army out of literally any faction. Otherwise, if you weren't using Leviathan, the other Space Marine chapters do have a few interesting things that could be worth mentioning. For the Blood Angels, the Sanguinor is quite cheap and is quite a lot of points. He has more points per dollar than Hellblasters, so it could be a good choice there. The Dark Angels, as mentioned, have Lionel Johnson on par with Gilliman as one of the best Space Marine points per dollar. The Deathwing Knights are fairly comparable with things like Hellblasters as well, not too far behind. Deathwatch could field veterans as the Proteus kill team, but that kind of would just be burning points for the sake of it, as you're not using the things that you're paying for like the Terminators. Though their Terminator datasheet in itself could be interesting as it costs a little bit more. Otherwise for the Space Wolves I noticed the Blood Claws seem to be fairly good value at 210 points for 60 US dollars due to being in a big box set of 15. The only one that doesn't really have anything worth mentioning in terms of vying for cheaper than regular Space Marines are Black Templars. I guess they do have a quite a small and recently redone range which works against that. Leaving the Space Marines behind though, next up we have the Imperial Knights. A just under 2,000 point list for $635. This one using a Knight Valiant or Castellan if you wanted to drop 5 points. 6 Armager Warglaives and 4 Armager Helverins. The Little Knights just being the cheapest that the faction has to offer. Kind of interesting that the Imperial Knights are quite so much more expensive than a few of the other offerings. They do have a reputation as a cheap army to collect. Though I guess it's partly just due to the fact that the most expensive Imperial Knight army isn't really too much different to this either. And only having a couple of main unit classes, you don't really need too many miniatures before you can fill just about everything the faction has to offer. Clear Depths Custodies, you can get the numbers down really quite cheap if you do abuse their characters. Two copies of the Adeptus Custodies Combat Patrol can get you making two shield captains, two jet bike shield captains, three Sisters of Silence Knight Centurus, and then three squads of four Witch Seekers, one squad of five Vigilators, Two units of four Custodian Guard and two sets of two Virtus Praetors. Add in a box set of Custodian Wardens for $60 and you get around about 2,000 points on the nose. Admittedly this one does have a kind of silly overuse of characters that you wouldn't really want to field in an actual army. If you just swapped out a bunch of those characters for more copies of say just Custodian Guard or Warden kits though, you wouldn't really go too far behind. The Adeptus Mechanicus are a famously expensive army to collect. Looks like their cheapest way to get just above 1950 points will be Belisarius Core. Six sets of two Castellan robots, so a big 12 chunky cybernetic entities there. You can fill them all in one army list in three units of four. Then adding in a couple of Scorpius Disintegrators for $80 each gets you at 1955 points. And you could make up the rest with enhancements, likely from the cohort Cybernetica from the Codex, given that this list seems to be so heavily themed that way. He would also be left with another three data smiths left over. You could maybe proxy them as tech priest engine seers or something. I would have left them out of any calculations here. In all honesty, for Admech, this was a little bit less bad than I was expecting. I guess you make pains to avoid any elite Skitaria infantry that don't cost very many points at all. It doesn't get so bad. Though I did find it kind of interesting but very unsurprising that their combat patrol isn't worth considering here. It's absolutely nowhere near the Castellan robots in terms of the points you get for the money investors. Next up for the Sisters of Battle we've got a just under 2000 points list for $750. This one does make very very good use of their combat patrol with all the monopose miniatures in. 3 Canonesses, 3 Penitent Engines, 30 Battle Sisters, 3 Rhinos, 15 Seraphim and Repentia and 3 units of 3 Arco Flagellants. I've made up the rest of the collection with Morven Var, Celestine and 2 sets of 3 Paragon Warsuits. As it goes, I feel like that actually makes a fairly well-rounded Sisters of Battle army between all the miniatures, though I guess you would have a fair few copies of repeat sculpts for the combat patrols. Potentially with a bit of creativity, you might have been able to use a fourth combat patrol, and maybe count the Canoness as a palatine, but you would have had to do something a bit weird with consolidating the squads of Arco Flagellants, given that you can only field them in either squads of three or ten. For the Grey Knights, given that their combat patrol is basically a microcosm of the entire faction, it seems just to make sense to fill three sets of those. That would give you three Librarians, three Grandmasters and Nemesis Dread Knights, as they're more points than the regular ones, three units of five Interceptors, 
and three units of five paladins. Putting that all together, it gets you 2,010 points. It could drop some points in a number of different ways, such as downgrading paladins to terminators. I feel like it's kind of funny that this one isn't actually necessarily even the worst Grey Knights army out there. You could feel some of the Dread Knights as regular ones. The Interceptors wouldn't lose many points dropping down to Strikes or Purifiers or anything. And you could feel Paladins as Terminators. Grey Knights definitely do feel like one of the armies right now. If you just wanted the entire faction, you could get multiple combat patrols. Looking at them, I did notice that basically the Strike Squads, Purifiers and Terminators do have a similar sort of points to value kind of ratio just bought individually. The combat patrol discount isn't huge. Next up, we have the Imperial Guard. Again, one of Warhammer 40k's most famously expensive factions here. Like the Admech, if you want to try and get your hands on Guard for cheap, it makes sense to avoid any infantry like the Plague and focus entirely on their heavy hitters. For this one, I've chosen to go with three tank commanders, three Lehman Rust Demolishers, a Storm Sword Super Heavy Tank, as that's the one that costs the most points, and a Rogue or Dawn Battle Tank to round out the rest of the points. Putting that all together, it gets you a fairly mighty and scary looking tank spearhead that it costs you 660 US dollars and clocks in at 1970 points. You could use Grand Strategist on one of the tank commanders, maybe. Not really an army list that's going to be scoring all that many objectives, but the sheer amount of guns that this can point at the enemy does look kind of intimidating, to be honest. There's not a lot that really wants to be eating the firepower of six demolisher cannons out in the open. Next up, and moving on to the Forces of Chaos, we have the standard Chaos Space Marines. For this one, Abaddon seems to be the single best points per dollar value, kind of similar to the Primarch, seeing as he's a big 310 points just by himself. Then it looks like it makes sense to use a couple of copies of the Warp Forge, a Venom Crawler with two Obliterators for $75, a nice little direct-only deal from Games Workshop. That would mean that you wouldn't be getting, say, the 15% discount you might get from Element Games or Wargame Portal or any of the other discount retailers. Adding on to this and a similar sort of price discount, there's two copies of the Combat Patrol, two Dark Apostles, 20 Legionaries, 10 Havocs and two Hellbrutes. I feel like you would wind up with a force that genuinely looks quite good and a fairly nicely balanced Chaos Army. I feel like it is perhaps focusing on a bunch of units that aren't enormously crazily scary in game right now even if they have been in the past at some point. For the knights that have fallen to chaos, like the Imperials, it does seem to make most sense to focus mainly on the little guys, particularly with the Wardog Brigand going up to 170 points. It looks like it makes sense to field as many of those as possible if you want the cheapest list. Then the next most expensive points-wise are the Wardog Stalkers, clocking in at 150. To round out the army list, I have chosen to use a set of Nurgling allies, just literally to get it up to that 1950 bracket that I was aiming for. Though you could potentially do that with just excessive use of enhancements on the Wardog Stalkers if you prefer that. Compared with the 150 point or more Wardogs, it does seem that the big knights would increase the cost of the list a little bit. Maybe not crazily enormously behind for things like the Knight Tyrant, but a bit so that it does bump up the price. Again, kind of interesting that the cheapest Chaos Knight list is also the one that tends to be played at tournaments quite a lot. More people tend to be using Wardog spam rather than the big knights. I guess this one isn't really all that far from being just an optimal list. You could make any of the Wardogs how you wanted them to be. I feel I could be tempted to get a few Wardog carnivores in there as well, given how effective they are. For the Death Guard, it seems like perhaps the best theoretical deal that you can get is the Lord Felthius and Tainted Cohort. This is the one that gives you a Lord of Contagion along with three Blight Lord Terminators with monoposed sculpts. The main issue with the Blight Lord Terminators is that you don't get quite enough to make a squad of 10, so I've taken a small liberty here in including one of those Lord Felthius copies as a regular Blight Lord Terminator so you can actually fill the unit in game. Might not be the most popular models out of the Death Guard range. I feel like I've heard a fair few people criticising Lord Felthius for being a bit on the cartoony side. He's not considered one of the nicest sculpts in the Death Guard range. Otherwise, beyond that, it seems to make sense to load up on the Mephitic Blight Haulers. You can field up to nine of those little demon engines at $29 each for 100 points, all fielded in three squads of three. And then to finish up, there's a combat patrol using Typhus 30 Pox Walkers, seven Plague Marines and a Biologist Putrefier, and a Plague Burst Crawler to finish the army. Overall, that has the Death Guard clocking in at $631 for just shy of 2,000 points. It does make them the single most expensive Space Marine army out of any of these. 
have certainly come a long way from when they started in 8th edition, where they were easily some of the cheapest to get into given all their discount deals. For the other Chaos Legions, we have the World Eaters. For their army, have gone very heavy on the combat patrols. Three copies of those at $160 each. That's to get you a crazy horde of 60 Corn Berserkers, 30 Jackal Cultists, and then three Lords on Juggernauts, one upgraded to Lord Invocatus, the fancy named character Juggernaut Lord with the Burning Steeds. Otherwise, just to neatly fill the last few points, I've chosen to include a Lamb Raider at $90 bring the army list up to 1,990 points. I can't help but think that that'd be a bit of a slog to get all those corn berserkers on the table. It'd probably go slightly insane painting their trim there. If that were the case, it certainly wouldn't get any better for this list for the Thousand Sons. It seems that their combat patrol, given its overabundance of Zangors, doesn't actually outcompete things like Rubric Marines or Scarab Occult Terminators, both of which give you a pretty similar points per dollar at their current points cost. I chose to go with the Rubric Marines here, just as it would make a little bit more sense with the Mass Exalted Sorcerers. There's two copies of the three-man kits here, each of which cost $60. Their sorcery brings three Exalted Sorcerers on foot, one regular one on foot, as you've used the Max 3 allowance, and then two more on disc. Then finally, as if that weren't quite enough Sorcerers for you, there's one more in Terminator armor to round out the list. Quite cheap for the points at $33.50. Overall, that puts you at 2,000 points for just over $510. I feel like if you do stick to Sorcerers, Scarab Occult, Terminators and Rupert Marines, though it's hard to go too far wrong with Thousand Sons, you'd be getting similar sort of numbers to this. Finally, for the Chaos, we have the Denizens of the Warp. Chaos Demons have a lot of kits and data sheets, though again, it looks like they're one of the ones where it just makes sense to spam out three copies of the Combat Patrol. That's going to give you enough Angry Cornate Rage to rival the World Eaters equivalent. 3 Bloodmaster Heralds on foot, 60 Bloodletter Foot Troops of Corn, 9 Cavalry Blood Crushers, and then a massive 30 Flesh Hounds. Quite a lot of bloodthirsty violence heading towards the enemy there. Then to back that up, there's a Torment Bringer Chariots for just $35 for 140 points. Not too bad on the numbers there. And finally, to round out the points, there's a Burning Chariot Kit. Fielded as a regular burning chariot plus a change caster. Not bad to get two data sheets out of one kit. Another option just for getting points on the board for cheap for the demons would have been the pink horrors. I didn't wind up using them there, but 140 points for $45 is a bit better than most things for 40k. Next up, the Eldari can have some army lists that are perhaps surprisingly cheap given that they've had some big points increases due to their excessive abilities. Stand out among these for points on the board for your money is the Incarn. $55 for 350 points is kind of massive. And then they're backed up by Eldrad Ulthran. Three Night Spinners, now they've gone up to a big 210 points. Three Support Weapon D Cannons, which are direct only from Games Workshop. And then Combat Patrol Eldari to finish off. A Farseer, 10 Guardians, 6 Wind Riders, and a Wraith Lord. Perhaps a bit weirdly artillery heavy Eldar there. You'd certainly have some of the enemies on the other side of the board fearing Vol's Wrath. At only $517 though, it does land the Eldari towards the top end of the value section, as opposed to the bottom though. Next up, for the cheapest list for the Drukhari, I chose to use three sets of the Combat Patrol, which is a bit of a no-brainer for them. In that you get three Archons, 30 Cabalite Warriors, 15 Incubi, and three each of Raiders and Ravagers. Generally quite a nice kit, that one. You do get a bunch of iconic units and knights plastic on the board. Definitely one that new Drukhari players are thinking about picking up multiple of. Otherwise, I've used three units of five Scourges. $35 each for quite an expensive unit. Realistically, for the Drukhari, I think if you wanted to improve the numbers a little bit, you could have got another set of three sets of five. That would improve things very slightly. But sort of doesn't really make sense to build out the squad to ten men, given that only the first five get the heavy weapons. Instead of that, I chose to go with two squads of Helions for the same price, though a cheaper points cost, and an extra set of Cabalite Warriors to round out the list and get up to the target. I to put the Drukhari at $700, maybe a little bit worse than I might have thought, given their combat patrol is quite a nice one with a lot of plastic in it. I guess it just doesn't have quite as many points as a few of the other ones. Next up, we've got the Tyranids, and these are definitely one that can be done very differently depending on whether or not you use the Leviathan box. It seems that without it, the best way to get towards 2,000 points is very weird. Hive Tyrant spam, take the Swarm Lord, 
three regular hive tyrants on foot, a winged hive tyrant, and then a couple of copies of the Warhammer 40k starter set. Even if you discounted the Space Marines or any saving you might have from then, you get a couple of winged primes, 40 termigans, six von Rhine's leapers, and two psychophages. I guess for your many hive commanders to squabble over how they're going to lead them into battle. I think realistically, if you were going for a modicum more of a sensible army, you might swap out some of those hive tyrants for tyrannifexes. They aren't really all that far behind on the point section. If you do allow Leviathan though, similar to the Space Marines, it's really quite a big deal. It's got 740 points worth of Tyranids in it, and if you could land the Tyranid box half for half the price of the box itself at $125, maybe splitting it with a friend, then this does look like it'll be the cheapest way to get Tyranids on the table. Going all in with Leviathan and using a couple of halves of the boxes here, two sets will get you two copies each of a Nero Tyrant Screamer Killer, Winged Prime and Psychophage, then a massive 60 Gaunts, 40 Termagants and 22 Neurogaunts, 10 Barb Gaunts and 6 Von Ryan's Leapers. I've then rounded that off with a Swarm Lord and a regular Hive Tyrant, which maybe don't feel like they're dominating things quite so much as the previous list. Like the Space Marines, it does seem that if you're allowing half of the Leviathan box set, then the Tyranids do rather well in the comparisons. It seems that they're second best for this contest bar the Space Marines. For the cultists of the high fleet, the genes to the cults are another one where you just want to take multiple copies of the combat patrol box set. And to be honest, I feel like it's genuinely the sensible play to get three copies of this if you were starting the faction. It's just so much better value than almost everything else that they have. This one will get you three Goliath rock grinders, 15 acolytes, 60 neophytes and 15 aberrants. A really good contingent of their core choices there. Perhaps the only thing that you'd have an overabundance of is the Magus, which isn't a great data sheet to start with, though it only contributes 50 points of the points cost anyway. All of that clocks in at 1965 points for $480. Kind of interesting that Genes to the Cult are often having a reputation that they're around about as expensive to collect as, say, Guard or Admech. Though ever since this Combat Patrol came out, that's not really the case quite so much. Hopefully Games Workshop don't ruin this when they re-release the Gene Stealer Codex. For the Orcs, they can certainly harness the power of the Stomper being as overcosted as it is. For the sheer amount of size and plastic that you get, the Stomper is perhaps surprisingly cheap at $140, significantly less expensive than a Knight, even though the thing is enormously bigger. $140 for 800 points worth of big Stompy Orc Walker. It is online only though, so you wouldn't get any discounts on it. Otherwise, for standout points, there'd be Gasgall Thracker for $75 or Mosrog Scragbad for $60 to take that up to just over 2,000 points. You could potentially field Mosrog as a regular beast boss if you wanted to drop it down to just below that. I feel like this one's perhaps the weirdest looking army out of the entire list of them, a strange four model orc army. I likely wouldn't be holding out too much hope of Games Workshop ever making the Stompers good though. I guess we'll see you with the next orc codex. For the forces of the Tomb World, the Necrons are also one where it seems to make sense to spam their Super Heavy. The Tesseract Vault and Transcendent Katarn perhaps gives you a surprising amount of points for the cost of it, as you're kind of just paying for the Super Heavy, but you also get a surprisingly points intensive Katarn to field separately if you'd like. It does mean fielding the Obelisk though, which isn't exactly considered a great data sheet out of the Necrons. Otherwise, both the Nightbringer and the Deceiver are really quite cheap, given that they're older small resin miniatures, but still cost the same price as the Mighty Void Dragon. And then to finish up points, we needed a character that can be the Warlord, so I've chosen the Royal Warden for that, for minimal investment. And then the remaining 200 points have been made up with a Doomsday Arc. If you wanted to get it a little bit closer to 2,000, you could spend an extra $10 and upgrade that to a Doom Scythe, perhaps. Again, this one's a very weird looking list, though I can't really help but think that it wouldn't actually be that terrible in-game. You'd have six units that are an absolute nightmare to deal with. And while I'm sure the obelisk wouldn't do very much, they could just sit on objectives and spam out some anti-infantry firepower while the Catan do their thing. In reality, for a more balanced army, you would probably be better off just getting combat patrols though. For the force of the greater good, the Tau Empire have chosen to go with two of their combat patrols. So that'd be two ethereals, two fireblades, two breacher teams, six stealth suits and a couple of ghost kills. And then after that, it's just crisis battle suits all the way after the points increase. I've maxed them out here with a massive 18 of them, 
six sets of three of them fielded in three big units for $80 per set of three. It seems that Crisis Bomb Tau is the way to go if you want to get an army a little bit cheaper, but even this kind of works out being crazily expensive compared with the rest. It's a big $800, so is the most expensive one that we've seen so far. The Tau just have lots of things that don't get you many points on the board for how much you spend, many due to Games Workshop decreasing the cost of all of their data sheets to try and rebalance them. For the main Tau one, I thought it might make sense to not just talk about their gun drones, though there is a way that you can field drones as a tactical drone unit just by themselves if you want to. They're just crazily overcosted at 70 points per four of them, kind of being a data sheet that it's just clear that Games Workshop don't actually want you to use. If you did just absolutely want to field the drone separately to burn points though, you absolutely could. It just makes sense to focus on those 18 crisis battle suits and get those units in and then field all their drones separately as tactical drones. You can use them in three big units of 12. Then you just need a character that also rounds up the rest of the points towards 2000. I've chosen to go with a single hammerhead fielded as commander long strike to fit that role. That does bring down the price of the theoretical cheapest Tau list quite considerably down to $550. I think this one does feel kind of like cheating really. Just given that you want to use the drones for the crisis suits as their war gear anyway. It's clearly a data sheet that Games Workshop's priced to the extent where they don't really want them as part of the mainline game. Finally last, and rather unfortunately it does seem least, we have the Leagues of Votan. Their cheapest ways to get points on the board are Einir, Hearthguard and their combat patrols. If we basically max both of those out, that gives us 25 Einir, Hearthguard for $60 each. And then three sets of combat patrols, fielding Uthar individually, two Karls, 30 Hearthkin, 15 Berserks and 9 Pioneers. And then finally finishing up with an Einir champion to make up the last few points. I guess the Leagues of Botan don't have the biggest range. And given that they're a fairly new army and also saw some very significant points cuts from the start of 10th edition, it's maybe not too surprising that they're one of the most expensive now. It's certainly a bit of a far cry from 9th edition, where their data sheets were all really quite costly, paying for their fairly godly judgment tokens. So their data sheets were all very expensive in points terms. 820 points does have them ranked at the very worst value in terms of the cheapest army that you can field, though not significantly ahead of certain other things particularly the Tau when they aren't relying on their drones to make up points numbers. Overall though, putting that all together, here's the final leaderboard for cheapest armies in Warhammer 40k, at least in my estimation. Using the Leviathan box set does seem to be the very cheapest option overall if it's available. First we have the Space Marines here at $310, then the Tyranids using their half of the Leviathan at $370. Otherwise, near the top, we have plenty of known fairly cheap armies like Adeptus Custodes and Grey Knights. Thousand Suns being fairly high up there doesn't really surprise me too much either. Perhaps more interesting is to see Orcs as one of the very cheapest armies that you can field, though admittedly they are being carried by their very overcosted Stomper. As mentioned, it is kind of cool to see the Jeans Dealer Colts as being one of the cheaper entries in this option. Previously, they'd be considered one of the more expensive armies, but until Games Workshop gets around to ruining their combat patrol, they do seem to be in quite a good place. Otherwise, for surprises towards the lower end of the table, Space Marines being kind of mid is maybe a little bit surprising given how many combat patrols they have access to. It just seems that most of them don't really break through versus some of the other options out there. Chaos Knights and Imperial Knights are ranked maybe a little bit further down the table than I might have guessed given their reputation for being cheap armies. But as mentioned when we talked about them, I feel like they're cheap more because you can just buy a few kits and magnetise them up and very easily have access to everything the faction has to offer. If you tried to do that for an army like Space Marines or Imperial Guard or something, then you'd be there a lot longer with all their different units and data sheets. Otherwise, towards the bottom end of the table, it is interesting that the best lists out of the Astra Militarum and Admech seem to nose out a few of the others, given how expensive their reputation is. I suppose most of their expense is tied to their infantry as opposed to their bigger stuff, and that does seem to allow them to nose ahead of certain other things like Sisters, Tau, and Leagues of Votan. In any case, a kind of interesting thought experiment. It was fun to try and work out some absolute lowest entry points for various factions, though I feel like maybe a fair few of these act better as things that function as actual armies compared with others. I feel like the ones using Leviathan at least get you a fair variety of units, 
The Grey Knights and Gene Steeler Colts ones aren't too bad either. There's certainly a few of the others like the Orcs or character heavy custodies are a bit weird in their cheapest forms. In any case, let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm sure I've made at least some mistakes or overlooked some things when going through every single faction's kits like this, so feel free to let me know down in the comments if there is anything that you could improve on any of these. I'll try and post any big stuff in a pinned correction as per normal. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.